Hi, I'm Frank Gagnon for Window Energy, and uh, this is our presentation we've done at Nergica uh, end of uh, January, and uh, we show how we expect to, uh, how we propose to reduce by 90% the greenhouse gas emission of the Norton village that depend on diesel. This is not a presentation about our wind turbine. But as the concept is based on a wind turbine, it's just a very short introduction. We produce 20 kilowatt wind turbine that going to be set in network of 100 kilowatt to few megawatt. So we have four size of turbine depending on the wind profile of the site we're going to install it. So wind energy is something random, as you can see in the image. So uh, real-time wind power, sometimes you have the maximum capacity, sometimes you have nothing. Uh, everybody know that. We can reorganize uh, this to make, to make better analysis uh, using the wind class uh, supplied by uh, the, the wind atlas of Canada. So, uh, for example, for a class of 6, which is wind from 5.1 to 6 meter per second, you have an occurrence of, let's say, 10% uh, per year, and knowing the wind farm, you know which kind of energy you're going to produce for that period. So, if we have a standard 1 megawatt wind farm with 50 of our wind turbine, it's going to deliver similar to giant wind farm, so it's going to be 30-40% of the capacity of the, the wind farm that's going to be supplied to the grid and which leave of course a uh, 60-70% uh, hole in, in, in the energy production that must be filled by the grid. This is not very uh, interesting for the grid, they, they, they have to manage that and uh, they, have, they have to have this uh, auxiliary system to support that. So if we do oversize wind farm instead of putting 50 wind turbine uh, for a, a 1 megawatt uh, connection, we put 100 wind turbine. You have uh, more exactly the same profile, except it's double. You have twice the energy, you have twice the wind turbine. So what you see on the graph, the yellow pages, the yellow part is what you deliver to the grid. So it's the, you have a much better density for the grid. You can have 50, 60, 65 percent of efficiency on the connection. But you lost a uh, part uh, of the electricity that uh, can be produced because of, of course sometimes you produce two megawatt because you have twice the, 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 the wind turbine. So there's a certain loss, 20-25% loss uh, that count. So if above, if, if, if the standard wind farm you produce electricity at three cents per kilowatt hour, when you double the, the, the number of wind turbine you're most probably going to have uh, the electricity you're going to deliver to the grid going to be something like four cents per kilowatt because you have some loss. Uh, if, of course, if you sell electricity five cents, it's not useful, but if you sell the electricity ten cents, it's it's big. Uh, and it's interesting. It's also for the grid to have a better consistency uh, in in the energy delivery. Now we can go above that and go to make. 200 wind, wind turbine farms uh, that are going to be able to, of course, to produce up to 4 megawatts sometime. And still, the yellow part you deliver to the grid now 65 to up, sometimes to 80% of the connection. So you have something very consistent uh, for, for, for the, 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 the electrical operator. And there you have almost 50% of overproduction. Now, this overproduction is now starting to be a good quantity enough of energy to try to use it for something. So, if we go up north now and we install 100 wind turbine of 20 kilowatt of wind, wind turbine, which is quite the equivalent of a one giant 2 megawatt wind turbine, okay, it's going to be the same profile. And uh, what we show here can also, in some place, sometime you be used by giant wind turbine when the, it's a larger uh, city. Average wind of 6 meter per second is common in the, up north. Is sometimes, most of the time it's a bit more than that. So we're going to deliver to the grid 
43% of the capacity if we have, of 2 megawatt. And of course, we still have a hole of 57%. So how we manage that? We, with the profile we, uh, of, uh, with the, of the wind farm and the, uh, the profile of the wind of a site, you can see how much in the, uh, how much time you're going to have. For example, 350 kilowatt. You you can say that 70 percent of the time we're going to have a steady 350 kilowatt. So if if we have something that we want to manage with a good density, that's a good setup. Or you have 80 percent of the time 200 kilowatt, and you have. Uh, 1.8 megawatt or more 33 percent of the time so you have a figure of how is your uh, wind farm going to hack with with the wind profile and if for example you need something very consistent for 250 kilowatt but instead of put 100 wind turbine you put 125 130 and you're going to reach it so you can make the optimization based on this basic uh, graph now, how do we have apply that on up north village? If we have a one megawatt generator in the village, uh, most of the time the average use of the, 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 the electricity is going to be about 50, 500 kilo, uh, kilowatt. So um, let's say on an average of 500 kilowatt, our wind farm, our 100 wind turbine farm is going to supply 70, 75% of the electricity demand directly by the wind turbine. And we use the first part of the overall production to keep some battery load. So those batteries can supply another 10-15% of the demand, which is still wind energy, but it has been stored in batteries. So that increase the, 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 the clean energy for the electricity of the village of 80-85-90% uh, uh, sometimes. And still, there are going to be sometimes not enough wind for a few days, uh, and the battery is going to be empty. So we're going to need the, the, the diesel generator sometimes. So we can say that 10, 15 percent of the demand come from the diesel generator. But now the diesel generator become an auxiliary system, an auxiliary system. It's not anymore the main power of the village. It's an auxiliary. So it's in case it's make the, 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 the electricity supply absolutely safe, but the decarbonation is now 90%. Okay, now the green part of the graph is the overproduction that we can use for heating. And of course, we're going to need some uh, heating sto heat storage for to, 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 to use that correctly. Now it's it. This is annual profile of uh, wind farm for a village, but we have to take in account that the, there is much more energy in uh, up north in the wind in the winter than in summer. You see, for example, in that example, in summer you have 86 watt per, per square meter of, the, of uh, energy in the wind in average, while in winter you have 382. Of course, it's a huge difference. It's not always that huge. But it shows that we're going to produce much more electricity in winter, and it's in winter that we need heat. So we won't produce too much heat on summer when we don't need it, uh, but we're going to have a lot in winter, and this is what we're looking for. Okay, how does it work? You may have, let's say, two or three or four megawatt of wind turbine uh, that for a village. You may have other uh, random energy from solar or hydrolyon, for example, and you still have the one megawatt genset that you can use. And all this go inside batteries, a good set of batteries to make the, the, the to make the production to, to smooth the production of energy, and it's passed through an inverter that is sized to grid capacity. We're going to come back on that. And this inverter gives the electricity and the heating for the houses and the commercial building. So we have uh, 
three MPPT on the battery charger that allow uh, that allow the system to maximize the efficiency of everything, and especially the genset. For example, when you have batteries with a genset, uh, you can have the generator work at its best speed, best power, and load the batteries and stop it. And so you start and stop, or you make the genera the generator work at lower speed if it's preferable for any reason. So it's very it's very efficient this way. Why we want to size the, the, the inverter to the, 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 the grid capacity? We have a distribution network capacity. Let's say it's 1.5 megawatt, and we have the basic electricity demand that vary, of course, continuously. What we want to do, we want to load the, the wire, the grid wire to maximum, so we can distribute energy for heating to add to the heat storage system. And like this, we can transfer a lot of energy. Of course, we don't always have the maximum capacity of the network that is available. So we still, of course, first work on the basic electricity demand. And sometimes you have, sometimes you have less electricity that you can distribute for the heating. Even sometimes you have Less wind, less other energy, less random energy. You need to use the battery, you need to use the GSL. Still, it's managed by the, the center and the, the center system. So how does it work? The center system is centered around Evlo batteries. And uh, we, have, we have a letter of interest about, for demonstration by Evlo, by the way. And uh, it, the, the control system most probably going to be built by ILO from Hydro Quebec. The system controls the energy available, the source of energy. Uh, you see how much wind energy it can receive. You see how much solar or uh, hydrogen energy it can receive. It reads the charge of the batteries. Do you need more energy in the batteries and everything? Read the demand and set. The system according to that. So if you have the battery is full and you, you, you the, 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 the grid is already low, you the system may decide to reduce the production of the wind turbine. Uh, if you have, for example, 100 wind turbine and you want to cut the electricity by 50% but because you have too much, you shut down 50 wind turbine. That's it, that's all. So it's very you can manage it as as you need. And on the other side, if you don't have enough wind, you don't have enough sun, you start the genset, and you start the genset at appropriate level. So the central system controls everything. And on the other side, you have to see what's the demand. The, the system has to control what is electrical demand and what is the level of each storage in the system on the backup. For example, if you have 100 house with uh, Steffi Furnace, for which uh, uh, Hydro-Quebec have signed a distribution agreement. They give subsidies for that. If you have 100 each storage to Steffi Furnace, they can hold 80 kilowatt hour each of heat. They can store that. So altogether, it's 8 megawatt of 8 megawatt hour of uh, in, uh, heat that they can store directly in the house adding to the have low 8 megawatt batteries. You can also have larger storage system for the commercial building. You can be you can have system like for example of 3 megawatt 3 megawatt hour uh, which is uh, the equivalent of a 20 feet container by the way for uh, in terms of size and if you have five of that then you can store 15 megawatt hour of energy over there also. So you have a lot of storage to back up the random incoming energy. Sometime, sometime you're going to have, you're still going to have too much wind energy if, of course, if you're not forced to cut the wind production, uh, the best you have to try to use it. You can shortcut a part of the production directly to the large heat storage system. This needs supplementary wire. It's going to be DC current. But uh, it's for, for for few large systems, it's worth it. So it's maximized it's maximized the efficiency of everything.
what we want to show from this demonstration is that we have to find a hybrid way to satisfy the demand to improve the penetration of clean energy. Uh, this is another model we have done here uh, with people that have grow module in container. And uh, we take the, the, the electricity production from our wind farms. A good part go on the grow module. Some go to the grid and some go to heat storage. And the grow module, they produce, they produce some passive heat that can, that can be the basic heat of a greenhouse. And the storage system, the heat storage system, supply the energy, the supplementary heat when the sun gets down. So there's a lot of, of other system other, that we can put together to increase the penetration of uh, the green energy. It could be the hydrogen production, it could be greenhouse, it could be heating, it could be uh, ammoniac. There's a lot of possibilities. So this is a bit how I went to bind look. If the Northern Village, they can have energy, uh, cheap, uh, low cost energy, one third or less than diesel electricity, for example, uh, first it's going to be good for their health. They, got, they won't have to burn the biomass or diesel to heat up. And they're going to have some economical opportunity. They're going to be able to produce things, to do things that is not economically viable because of the cost of the energy. There's a lot of things they can do for their home economy. So it's a win-win situation. So thank you for your attention. And uh, of course, if you want to have more information about the window, you go on, your, on our website. Have a good day.